Deish Gergülü was nine years old when she swore off music. She was 30 when she decided to take it up again. So what makes someone refuse music for 20 years? Deish grew up in Turkey as part of the Alevi Baktashi community. In fact, her name, Deish, is the name for a type of Alevi spiritual music. But in the mid-90s, as a child, she lived through one of the flare-ups of the Kurdish-Turkish conflict. The tension surrounding this conflict, which started way back in the early 70s, meant that her father, a trumpetist for the Turkish army, forbid her from singing Alevi songs. It wasn't until she moved to France as an adult that she felt she could sing again. And eventually, she founded an ensemble called Evden with viola d'amore player Isabelle Eder and flautist Marie Bloquin. They perform a kind of fusion between European classical music and Ottoman music. And just to give you an idea of the vastness of Ottoman music, Daish sings in Ladino, Turkish, Greek, Assyrian, Armenian, and Arabic, among other languages. Here, I should give a personal update. I interviewed Daish at her kitchen table in her apartment in the charming cobblestone streets of the old town of Lyon, France. This interview was the first time we spoke English together instead of French. I was connected to Daish by an Argentinian musician I had met during my desperate search for a place to stay in Lyon at the beginning of my artist diploma studies at the local high conservatory. I was a foreigner trying to navigate French housing bureaucracy, and Daish took me in for a week short notice. Daish and I talk about Alevi culture and the gem gathering, which Daish likens to a jam session, about the vast world of Ottoman music, about the meaning of the word Evden, the name of her ensemble, about the song Daish is writing for the women of Iran, and about one problem shared by music and baklava, among other things. I was the first child and uh, actually I was normally alone at home. I was in front of the mirror and uh, I was uh, communicating with myself and I, I was imagining mm-hmm. that the mirror mm-hmm. was my friend ah. and uh, this person I see mm-hmm. uh, is living in another planet <laughs> and uh, she's, she's singing ah. there and we are connected and my name is a type of music, liturgical music, let's say, mm-hmm. uh, sacred music of Alevi and Bektashi minority in Turkey. I grew up in a Alevi family. Mm-hmm. We practiced a lot uh, music because we pray with music. We have to perform music for praying and we have to dance every Thursday night. Our gathering mm-hmm. name, mm-hmm. Uh, Jam. It's kind, it's kind of jam session. And jam means we are getting together as Alevi and Bektashi person. Mm-hmm. In the beginning, we are asking the public that mm-hmm. all of the Alevis are mm-hmm. uh, okay with each other. Mm-hmm. They, are, they don't have any problem mm-hmm. with one another. And if there is a problem, we are talking about it. Mm-hmm. We have to solve this problem mm-hmm. before we uh, start to play music Mm -hmm. and then when we uh, say okay we are all together and it's all fine we don't have any problem Mm -hmm. and we start playing music Mm -hmm. then we start Mm -hmm. jamming (laughs) (laughs) and it started normally like that I was singing I was dancing I was just loving the movement and singing all the day long. I was singing all the time our traditional songs. I was singing and uh, at the age of nine, we moved to another city, Batman. Batman is a city, it's not only a character. 
<laughs> it is a city in Turkey. Uh, so my family, my father was trumpetist in the army of Turkey. Uh, that's why we moved to Batman. And he said, uh, it is not allowed to sing uh, our songs there. So I, I felt so much pain. I started to sing in my head alone. Silence, uh, silently, and uh, it was difficult for me to keep going. And right after, I I said, okay, I can live without music. The age of nine, it was a decision decision I made. I think it was it was a really difficult decision, and I didn't, I couldn't start again till I moved to France because of uh, political issues in Turkey. I felt that I was not in my place. Uh, I was not in peace there any longer. So I moved and I felt myself speechless again. And I, I was like, I, I couldn't breathe. I have to sing, otherwise I can't exist anymore. I have to sing in my mother language. I, I, I have to express my happiness, my anger, my disappointment, all these things. In May, normally we have um, a kind of a ritual. Uh, it is called Ederlezi, uh, Hudrellez. Maybe you know uh, the song, uh, the famous song of... Uh, Can you sing the melody? I don't think I would know. Um, hey, na -ra -la -ra 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 -la. Sounds like something I heard a long time ago. <laughs> no. So we have this ritual uh, that we are writing our wishes. I was 30 years old and I said, okay, when I will be 40, I want to have 10 years of career in music. But it was a difficult decision as well because uh, I didn't have I, I didn't do anything about music in my life. Mm -hmm. I studied physics and business, and then I was specialized on wine business. So I didn't do anything about music. So I started like that, and right now I'm in the middle. <laughs> I'm 35. <laughs> But you said actually you told me something interesting, which was that your father really wanted you to do music. Yeah, it, he he really wanted to wanted me to play an instrument. An instrument. But the thing that I I was really motivated to sing and perform and to see myself express with words, and I was forbidden, mm. and I couldn't. I couldn't pass over it. That you could only play an instrument and not sing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I couldn't. I couldn't see myself uh, in the music yeah. any longer without without singing. without singing. And what is it specifically about singing that is so problematic? Is it because of the language? Because yeah. uh, we are minority, mm -hmm. and in Batman, we, it was kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, the period was 1995, mm. Nine. Mm -hmm. It was it was really difficult. It is a um, uh, it was uh, we had a civil war. Unfortunately, that's why the I, I felt the blockage. Yeah, you felt blocked. Yeah, yeah. But then in France, mm -hmm. I felt the emergency. Mm -hmm. Let's say mm -hmm. that I should I have to sing. Otherwise, I won't exist anymore. The story is quite funny. I met teacher, music teacher. Uh, she introduced me a, a Greek oud player, and we misunderstood each other. Uh, I I introduced myself as a Turkish, and I he said, "Oh, we are doing Ottoman music," and I said I was so shy. I said, "Ah, oh, if you need translation, ask me whenever you want." Mm -hmm. And he totally misunderstood 
because he was he's Greek and I'm Turkish and we we were trying to speak French <laughs> funnily enough and he totally misunderstood he misunderstood and he invited me to uh, école nationale de musique mm -hmm. but I didn't even know that it is a école it, it is a school of mm -hmm. music I was there for translation <laughs> I was naive, <laughs> let's naive. say, <laughs> naive, yeah, and uh, they asked me to uh, sing, I was shocked, I was like, why? Mm -hmm. they, they said, uh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I just sing, and mm -hmm. then uh, they said, okay, if you want to uh, mm -hmm. play with us, sing with us, you are welcome. I said, I was thinking that maybe I um, I can be with them in a, a chorus or something. I said, okay, why not? And then they prepared some papers. Mm -hmm. And it was written, École Nationale de Musique Cursus uh, uh, Musique Ottoman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh. <laughs> I didn't even understand what is going on. And it started like that. And thanks to this uh, school, I met lots of wonderful musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, and thanks to this musician, uh, musicians, I uh, met with Isabel. Mm -hmm. uh, Isabel, she is playing viola, viola d'amore. When we met, suddenly, I mean, it was the first sentence of her. You know what? I am playing viola d'amore and I couldn't find anyone to make music uh, with. Are you interested in? Uh, we can do some something. We can mm -hmm. we can try. I said, okay, why not? But you should know that I am not professional. Mm -hmm. She said, it's okay because I don't know uh, your music either. Mm -hmm. We can we can do we can do something. Mm -hmm. Let's say let's uh, let let's just start. Mm -hmm. And we started. And right now, it is our second year together, mm -hmm. or yeah, let's say second year. Mm -hmm. Last year, we had 50 concerts mm -hmm. in Lyon, uh, and we, ha uh, we had the tour uh, from Lyon to Istanbul. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end, we, uh, we were invited to a festival, a uh, Truva festival mm -hmm. in uh, Troya, in ancient city uh -huh. in Turkey, uh -huh. which is called Çanakkale in Turkish. Mm -hmm. And it's a really, really ancient city. Uh -huh. So, yeah, we are here. Our project named uh, Evdan Music. Mm -hmm. Evdan means Femaison. Um, ah, like uh, homemade. Homemade, yeah, homemade. Evdan means homemade. Evdan means uh, from home, mm -hmm. but we don't know where. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we like this joke, mm -hmm. uh, kind of mm -hmm. jeu, jeu mm -hmm. de mots. Uh, so yeah, uh, we are right now we are three: uh, Marie, Isabelle, mm -hmm. et, et moi-même, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and me. <laughs> which is great, but then you said that you left because there's restrictions on music making there. So mm -hmm. how did they actually work? Because clearly they're not absolute. Yeah, it's yeah, it case. is true. Yeah. Uh, the problem is, actually the problem is so current. Last year, the government, unfortunately, they cancelled almost 10 really important festival, music festival, mm. art festival in Turkey, because they, they think that festivals are not appropriate to kind of our culture mm -hmm. i think it's it's so dangerous because our culture it doesn't mean anything we have lots of different cultures there's different different nationalities mm -hmm. different languages and saying that our culture mm -hmm. is really diminutive let's uh, say what it yeah. how can i how can i uh, call it it's uh, re reductive yeah maybe, you mean it is kind of yeah. yeah it is how we how we are we, yeah. you have to uh -huh. have to follow so our yeah authoritarian yeah. and as if the culture of government is the culture of the country mm -hmm. uh, so they cancelled lots of concerts and unfortunately a singer a pop star maybe you know about mm -hmm. it we, maybe we yeah, talked you, about yeah. it she was in prison 
because mm. she made a joke about Islamic culture mm. uh, and right after he uh, she apologized it was not enough so mm. she was in prison mm. and right now she can't leave the country she is kind of in prison in Turkey uh-huh. like house uh, arrest maybe. yeah this is the situation yeah. and it is really serious yeah really for a uh, government to do that mm-hmm. because of something someone says that's mm-hmm. a yeah, restriction of free speech uh, but at the same time unfortunately this is the culture of the go- the governments although uh, their uh, ideology uh, changes mm-hmm. uh, in time uh, For example, let's say before uh, 2000, singing in Kurdish was forbidden mm. in Turkey. It's such a shame as a Turkish person. I don't know if I can say that I am Turkish. I don't even know. Uh, I don't think that we can be mm. purely something. Mm. The thing is, singing in Kurdish was forbidden. And even today, uh, it can create problems. Mm. And I don't want... to see my lovely country in this position mm-hmm. because it is such a rich country uh, with lots of lots of generosity and right now it's so sad that we are here but do you think that this is kind of the, the like the pendulum that it swings to the authoritarian and then you think it might swing back i hope that we can we can pass over yeah, uh, this authoritarian mentality mm. just because of that we are suffering we can't express our, uh, ourselves as it should be yeah. so it's frustrating yeah well you talk about this richness of culture because of course the turkish government thinks that it is supporting turkish culture but you say that turkish culture is actually many different cultures right yeah of course so can you just for someone who's who's not turkish for a, an english speaking audience can you just say roughly what what are some of the main cultures that you can encounter in turkey let's say uh, we have armenians greeks sefarad mm-hmm. they they speak ladino mm-hmm. georgians assyrians mm-hmm. chaldeans mm-hmm. alevis ezidis syrians laz Cherkes, mm. Cherkes, uh, Caucasians, and many more yeah. that I can not even count. Mm. But this is the richness of yeah. uh, this land mm. uh, with Byzantine Empire, Roman Empire, and then Ottoman Empire, mm. uh, right now Turkey. And mm. we should just embrace our richness yeah. uh, instead of punishing yeah. them. Yeah. <laughs> This Ottoman music, this is kind of like an umbrella, very broad term, right? Ottoman Empire was really huge. Yeah. Uh, but when we talk about Ottoman music, let's say uh, Ottoman music was the music uh, in the palace. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we can easily hear the influence of Sefarad and mm-hmm. Armenians, mm-hmm. Greeks, that they lived in Istanbul mm-hmm. uh, and they were the ma- majority. Of course, we, we had so many Turkish as well, mm-hmm. but the culture was so mixed that right now we can't even know, we can't mm-hmm. even uh, differentiate where all these melodies come, mm-hmm. came from. And the question is, is it necessary yeah. to differentiate just uh, the same example for baklava? I don't understand why we are fighting for it. <laughs> I mean, it is so ridiculous yeah. because I don't think that the music uh, or the gastronomy uh, can be our own for our own nation. Of course, we share our receipts mm-hmm. with our neighbors. Mm-hmm. How can I say that baklava is Greek or Turkish? Or I don't even know Albanian mm. or uh, Bulgarian. They are all proud of baklava. <laughs> that uh, it, Baklava is Bulgarian, baklava is Turkish. <laughs> I don't believe that. I believe that we are sharing uh, the same land and uh, same inspiration. In music, in food, in colors, and in all these uh, different uh, seasons. Can you tell me a little bit about then uh, some of the 
characteristics about the music. I remember you were showing me these scales and things. We have makams, uh, let's say these are modes, scales, uh, yeah. scales uh, but I don't think that we have the duality uh, mm -hmm. of uh, yeah. major and main minor. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's say makam music, we have makams for, let's say, two hours of a day, mm -hmm. uh, we have different makams, mm -hmm. uh, which represent a morning, mm -hmm. an afternoon, uh, late night. Mm -hmm. We are, uh, we have some uh, microtonals, and in Turkish music, we have different uh, rhythms. Mm -hmm. Let's say nine, uh, nine eight, mm -hmm. seven eight, mm -hmm. five four, five mm -hmm. uh, eight, mm -hmm. even sixteen, mm -hmm. uh, sixteen eight. But sixteen, we divide, uh, we divided five five six. This is the richness of uh, mm -hmm. Ottoman music. How many scales then do you have? There's many, many, many. <gasps> many, many, many. Yeah. In, in the empire time, mm -hmm. they had a competition. Mm -hmm. They had a, even, let's say, invitation mm -hmm. from sultans that mm -hmm. if a musician can find a, a scale, a mm -hmm. makam, mm -hmm. he can be or she can be mm -hmm. awarded by sultans mm -hmm. and he or she can be really, really rich mm -hmm. with all, only like, with the scale, okay. uh, the Just invention. One. invention. Uh, to invent a new one. Yeah. Ah, okay. that's why. <laughs> there's, that's why there's so many because so everyone many. was inventing them. Yeah. Okay, I get yeah. it. <laughs> but but the rule the rules were really mm -hmm. really strict mm -hmm. because sultans were uh, musicians as well. Mm -hmm. It reminds me this makam, it, it, the system, the fact that it's linked to the time of day. It reminds me of the ragas yeah, in, yeah. in India. But I think that maybe this is a cult because the culture is kind of traveling from that I direction. I think so. Anyway. I think so. Yeah. And uh, this multiplicity that we were talking about this too, that we in, uh, in Christian Europe, we have this duality, this binary, this uh, minor, major. Although I was also telling you that before we had equal temperament, actually it was a more complicated. E flat would really be different than D sharp and you would have slightly different intervals. Ever since equal temperament, we've lost a lot of the richness that you have retained in the makam, I think. Yeah. And by the way, I don't know if you said this, that the musicians you work with are often Baroque musicians, right? Yeah. Because viola da gamba, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then the flute player that you work with is also a yeah. Baroque specialist, that these kind of go together somehow, like this mm -hmm. folk music. Let's you, say fusion. <laughs> yeah, it's a fusion. It's a little bit, yeah, it is a little fusion when I listen to it. <laughs> so do you, do you, are there just some certain makam that you just kind of use so that you're not using the whole 200? I mean, there must be some that are just more popular and that just you are more comfortable with you know uh, right now in uh, in my uh, group mm -hmm. uh, we are not experiencing macombs because they oh. are not coming from this uh, oh, okay. education system okay. but they would love to learn mm -hmm. um, that's why uh, we are trying to mm -hmm. uh, find our ways mm -hmm. and learning together uh, we will see uh, yeah. if we can integrate macombs in our music. I would love to, yeah. uh, but we need time. But I mean, I think that when you sing, you do kind of use some microtones. No? Yes, yes, yeah. I do. Okay. Uh, I can't help myself. Yeah, it's part of the music. <laughs> <laughs> I can't control yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Masa Amini. She's an Iranian lady who was killed by Iranian policemen. And I would love to write what I feel about this tragedy as a neighbor, let's say, because we are kind of sharing. Of course, it is not the same atmosphere. In Iran, women are suffering mm -hmm. a lot. In Turkey, this is a lake country. Mm -hmm. So we have so many opportunities as uh, women, uh, but I understand totally uh, this, this suffering and this um, movement, feminist movement, even let's say uh, revolution. And I would love to talk about 
Mm -hmm. uh, this revolution with a song uh, mm -hmm. I would love to I started to write lyrics about it mm -hmm. it might be a rhythmic song mm -hmm. that we can dance because I would love to express myself although it is a tragedy uh, I would love to uh, say that we are here we are dancing and we are fighting for our rights mm -hmm. and we will be here And you started writing the lyrics yeah, yeah. In, in Turkish. In Turkish, yeah. in Turkish. So when do you think you will finish this song? Maybe next month, mm -hmm. hopefully. Uh, we already started to compose it. Mm -hmm. We will see. I, I am excited. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to say so much, so many things with music, all these sufferings of minorities mm -hmm. or women. I think we are here for each other. Enjoyed that convo. Daish would like to collaborate on her song for Iranian women with Iranian musicians, both in France and in Iran. It may be that by the time you listen to this, she would have finished her song. I've left links to the Evden Ensemble in the description. Also, Evden's music videos are quite visually striking. I've linked those in the description as well. Here's to being on the verge.